Hey guys, what's up? Lou in here at GarageBand and beyond. Today I'm going to show you guys a really simple trick. Um, this is for anybody who is recording, you know, right at the top of the project window, right? So if you're using GarageBand and you're using the count in, right? So it goes one, two, three, four, and you start recording right away. But what is happening is that you're missing your cutting off that very, very first millisecond of your recording. And, you know, a lot of people have a, a, a solution, which is, you know, we'll just start the project somewhere else, you know, down the timeline. However, you do not have to do that. And I realize that a lot of you guys didn't know this. And so I'm going to show you why not. Okay. So uh, first off, what you need to do is understand that all of that information is there. Okay. So none of it, it, even though you think like it started recording here, it actually started recording a little bit before that. So that's what's so awesome about, you know, one of the new features of GarageBand that I think is so awesome. Um, one of the things I recommend doing is just shoving the drum track up to the top when you're going to move your files over to find the beginning of these clips. Um, because you need to do it in a manner where the drums don't get, if you're using the drummer, it's important for you to move it inside of the beat, right? So if you don't know, I have this set up right now to beats uh, and project, right? So basically each one of this from one to two is one bar, right? We're in four, four, there are four beats per the bar. So from one to two is one bar. I mean, you can count it. Now it's a particularly slow 4-4 four because four, this one's set to 45. However, that is where they are. So when you move everything, all you're gonna do is select all, you're gonna grab all of these different things and you're just gonna shove it forward to number two here. And you want it, it has to be directly in line. If you don't move it in line with the next bar, the drums get all shifted and they think they are somewhere else inside of the rhythmic phrase. So you gotta be make, you gotta make sure that it's right at the top of the bar. That's easy. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to do is come down to all your recorded tracks. Here are mine. Oh, and just, just so you hear what the, I'm talking about, just so you hear it, here's everything cut off. Right, and I'm sure you recognize that sound. But check this out, I come here, I get this tool, I click and I'm grabbing it and I'm pulling it left and there it all is. See, all of that information is still there. So it wasn't cut off, it's still there and this is how you access it. Now, it sounds like this. Right, so it's a much more natural feel. You f you know you hear the first drum of the guitar, you hear the hammers coming down, um, and then you know if you want to like hide any mistakes, you know obviously you can drag this drum track back out, have an add a fill, right. That, those sorts of things help it seem a little more natural when the music comes in. However, that's basically the entire video. You got all your stuff is still there. Don't worry. It didn't cut it off. And it's amazing that it is there because it blew my mind when I figured this out. All right, you guys. So thank you always for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, I do record songs for you guys. I mix songs for you guys. I play guitars and bass and all that. If you want information on that, check out the mixing inquiries page on GarageBand and beyond.com. And uh, of course, if you, know, you want to get sale or discounts on the stuff that I sell through my mailing list, sign up on the mailing list at garagebandandbeyond.com. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are the best. Have a great day. Peace and love. Peace and love.